Hello everyone. In this video, you'll be learning about various mathematical operators that can be used in Python. We've already covered a couple of examples of the addition operator. Before I proceed to the next mathematical operator, I want to go through a quick quiz. I'm going to copy the code from the previous cell and paste it into a new cell. Then I'm going to remove the print function call from line number two and from line number three. What do you think will be the output of this particular cell? If you had guessed that line number one will get printed and that line number three will get displayed into the output box, then you had the correct answer to my question. Why exactly is this the case? Whenever you use the print function call, that particular line of computation will always get printed. If you don't use the print function call, then Jupyter Notebook can only display the last line of computation into the output box, which is 5 plus 4 here. The line of computation 2 plus 4 vanishes into thin air. How can you go through subtraction in Python? You can simply say 2 minus 3. What about multiplication? You'll have to use the asterisk symbol. An example of that would be 3 asterisk 5. Let me show you a couple of other ways of multiplication which will not work in Python. Python cannot understand when you say 3x5. I'm going to introduce to you what is called as comment in the world of programming. What exactly is a comment? You can tell Python interpreter not to execute a particular line of code by commenting it out. How can you comment a line of code? You'll have to type in hash or the pound key in front of it. So I'm going to add a note here saying does not work. And now if I rerun the cell, notice that the error does not appear anymore. Another way for multiplication which wouldn't work in Python is to put the numbers into parentheses. You cannot say 3 and 5 inside parentheses. Python will not be able to understand it. I'm going to comment this line of code as well. Let's go through one more example of multiplication. I'm going to show you what is the result of one into one. As you would have guessed, the answer is one. Let's move on to division. What would happen if I say one divided by one? One might guess that you'll get an answer as one, correct? That's not the case in Python. You're going to get 1.0. So what's the difference between these two outputs here? One is a whole number. Another one is a decimal number, correct? Shortly, we are going to learn what data types each of these numbers are in Python world. Let's go through a couple of other examples of division operator here. What would be the answer when I say three divided by two? you'll get 1.5. What if I'm interested only in the one here? I can use what is called as integer division, which is the double forward slash. So I'm going to tag this particular line of code as integer division. In other terms, you're getting the quotient of this particular division operation here, correct? One other way for you to think about it is you're rounding down the regular divisions result and that's why you're getting one here. Couple of other examples of integer division, 11 integer divide four would give you two. What would happen when you say one integer divide and a very large number like this? You're going to get what is called as scientific notation. You don't have to worry too much about what exactly the E here refers to, but just be aware of the fact that you might get scientific notation as the result of a particular computation. Let's go through division with a few examples within the same cell. What if I say one divided by two? And what if I say one divided by one? What would be the output of this particular cell? you're only going to get 1.0, correct? If you want to see the output of the first line of computation, you'll have to use the print function call. 
So let me add print function call now. What will happen if I try to divide 1 by 0? One would think that Python would be unhappy in that case because you cannot divide any number by 0. That would be a correct guess. You're going to get a 0 division error. I'm going to teach you how to read the error stack output here. You're going to be spending majority of your time trying to debug your code whenever you're trying to program. So it is important for you to understand how to read error messages, specifically when you get error messages on Jupyter Notebook. So you're going to get the detail of the error, which is zero division error in this case. That is quite intuitive. Which particular line of code was the error part of? That's line number three, which is being highlighted by this green arrow. Which input cell is that particular line part of? That is input cell number 20, which is given in this text, ipython hyphen input hyphen 20. Do make sure to go to view and click on toggle line numbers. You should always have line numbers displayed whenever you're writing code in Jupyter Notebook. What would happen if I were to add one more computation into this cell? Let's say that I'm adding one divided by minus one here. That particular line of code will also not get executed. So in Python, whenever you run into a line of code which has an error, further lines of code in your program will not get executed. So let's uh, learn about uh, the data types for whole number and for decimal number. I'm going to introduce you to a function called as the type function. You can type in type, open parenthesis and close parenthesis. Within the type function call, you can type in any value whose type you want to understand in Python world. 10 in Python world is called as an integer, which is in short int. So if I run this particular cell, you're now going to get the output as int. What would be the type of 10.0? That would be floating point, which is float in short. So whole numbers in Python have integer data type or int type, and decimal numbers in Python have floating point type or float type. So let's uh, try out a couple of other examples of type function call here. You don't have to essentially just type in numbers, you can type in computation. For example, you can say three in type of three into two, that's going to get you an integer. What would be type of three divided by two? That will be a floating point value in Python. Let's try type with integer division. As the name suggests, it is integer division. So your output type is going to be of integer. Let's go through a couple of other examples of division, which will enable me to talk about quirks of programming languages. What would the output be when I say one divided by 100? That's going to be 0 0.01. What about 1.2 divided by 100? That's going to be 0 0.012. What do you think will happen if I say 1.3 divided by 100? You're getting a strange number here, right? Instead of getting just 0.013. Why is this the case? For Python, a whole number is very different from what human beings consider to be a whole number. For human beings, a number 10 or 100 or 1000 might be considered as a good whole number. For Python, powers are two are considered as whole numbers. So sometimes you might get this really strange output where you have a really lengthy output as part of the display. You don't have to worry too much about it. Just be aware of the fact that you might be able to see such an output from your computation. So let's go through one more operator here, which is the modulo operator. I told you you can get the quotient of division by using the integer division operator. 
So when I say 11 integer divide 4, I'm going to get 2. Before that, let me show you 11 regular divide 4. That's going to give you, give you 2.75, which is a floating point value. Whenever you divide integer by an integer, your result will always be a floating point value. So what would happen when I say 11 integer divide 4? You're going to round that down, so you'll get 2. How can you get the remainder of this particular operation? I'm going to say 11 modulo 4, and that's going to give me 3 here. Why is the modulo operator useful? When combined with the division operator, the modulo operator can enable you to find specific digits in your integer. For example, let's say that I have a number 987 and I'm interested in taking out the last digit. I can say that, sorry, I can get that by saying 987 modulo 10. What if I wanted to get the digit in the tens place? I can do that by saying 987 integer divide 10 and then modulo 10, correct? So what would the output of 987 integer divide 10 be? That would be 98 and then that modulo 10 is going to give you 8. So just to show you the output of the first computation, you'll get 98 out of, out of that. How can you get 9 out of the number 987? You can simply say 987 integer divide 100 modulo 10 and that, that's going to give you 9. Very powerful combination of integer division operator and the modulo operator. We have learned a lot of binary operators. What is a binary operator? When you have operands on either side of the operator, that's called as the binary operator. Example would be integer division operator here. You have 987 and you have 100. So let's go through a couple of examples of unary operator. What is a unary operator? The operator will be associated with a single operand. An example of that would be 3 minus minus 4. We have two different subtraction operators here. The first one is binary subtraction and the second one is unary minus sign. What would be the output of this computation? That would be 7, correct? 3 minus of minus 4 is nothing but 3 plus 4. One more example of using unary operator would be 3 plus minus 4. That's going to give you minus 1. Let's move on to learning about exponent operator. Before I show you what is the correct way to perform exponent in Python, I want to show you what is an incorrect way of doing that. You shouldn't be using the uptick symbol. That means a totally different thing in Python. So if I execute this cell, notice that we are not getting 8 as the answer. So what exactly is this symbol? This is something which is called as binary exclusive or we'll never be using that. But I just want to show you that this particular operator is not exponent in Python. So how can you do exponent? You'll have to type double star. So 2 to the power 3 would be 2 double star 3 and you're going to get 8. Another example of exponent would be 3 to the power 2. You're going to get 9. What if you want to take square root? You can say 9 to the power 0.5. An equivalent of this would be saying 16 to the power 1 divided by 2, which is the same as saying 16 to the power 0 0.5. Notice the difference in terms of the data type that you get when you square a number and when you take a square root. Whenever you square an integer, you're always going to get output as an integer. Whenever you take square root of an integer, you're always going to get floating type as your output. So let's go through one other example for exponent here. What do you think minus 5 to the power 0, sorry, to the power 2 will give you? 
One might guess that this will give 25 as the answer, but that is not the case. You'll get minus 25. What is so different about this particular example? It has to do with something which is called as operator precedence. So let me switch back to the slide deck and we are going to learn all about operator precedence. Operator precedence means that you apply certain rules in order to simplify a computation in Python language. Every language has its own set of operator precedence. Whatever we are going through is specifically applicable only to Python programming language. So let's go through an example here. There are three rules when it comes to operator precedence. Rule number one is that you should always simplify anything within a parenthesis. So this particular computation has a parenthesis. So you're going to perform that computation first. You'll end up with 0 0.5. Rule number two is that you should go through higher precedence first. For now, I'm going to tell you that exponent has the highest precedence in this particular computation. So that's what we are going to do now. So 16 to the power 0 0.5 is 4. Rule number 3 is that you need to break ties left to right. The next operator that has higher precedence is the multiplication operator. Notice that you have two different multiplication operators. So you're going to break the ties left to right and you will be going through the first multiplication operator. So that's going to give you 9. Next, you'll be doing higher precedence once again, which is 2 into 2. And now you're left with just the addition operator. You'll be breaking ties from left to right. You'll be doing 9 plus 4 first, which is 13. And then 13 plus 4 would give you 17. So let's go through all the rules for operator precedence here. The highest precedence goes to the exponent operator. Following that, it is for unary signs. Then you have multiplication, division, integer division, and modulo operator. After that, you have addition and subtraction. Then you have comparison, which are double equal to, not equal to, less than, less than or equal to, greater, greater than or equal to. We'll be shortly going through examples for the comparison operators. Finally, you have all of the Boolean operators which are not, and, and or. Some of these orderings, sorry, some of this ordering might not make sense to you. So I'm going to give you a way for remembering higher level combination of all of this operator precedence ordering. First section of this ordering belongs to mathematical operators. And then you have the comparison operator. And then finally, you have the logic operators. One exception to simplifying last would be something which is known as short circuiting. I'll be talking about short circuiting as part of the Wednesday's lecture. Let me go ahead and wrap up this video here. In the next video, I'll be going through various other data types and we'll go through more examples.